This room is filled with a lot of greatness, but there's a lot of talk these days about the concept of moving from good to great. Great book by a guy named Jim Collins, Good to Great. But I've really got it down. I've got it clear in my mind that there's one key difference that makes the difference that really elevates good to great. And you know what that ingredient is? It's called inspiration. Inspiration. I like to think of inspiration very simply. I like to think of it in terms of its opposite. If you're not real inspired, you're pretty much on the way to getting expired, okay? <laughs> I, and my inspiration for today comes from one of my great teachers. Everything we're going to do today will be built from this great teacher. This teacher happens to be my youngest daughter, whose name is Jenna. Now, Jenna is now 15, which I can hardly believe, all right? But she gave me the inspiration for everything we're going to do today when she was four. And when she was four, we lived in a place called Hamilton, Montana. Anybody ever been to, heard of Hamilton, Montana? Whoa, this is a record. I got five hands. All right. Anybody ever seen the movie A River Runs Through It? Anybody ever see that movie? Brad Pitt movie, fishing movie, depends on what you're into. <laughs> All right, that's Hamilton, Montana. Now, I want you all to get a vision of Hamilton, Montana. Because Hamilton, Montana sits in a place called the Bitterroot Valley. The Bitterroot Valley has a valley floor, 3,500 foot elevation. Living out here in the east now, that sounds really high. But that's the valley floor. Literally five miles, not six, from the center of this itty bitty tiny town, shoots up on one side of the valley, 12,000 foot mountains, and they just go, whoa. They're snow covered, they're extensions of the Rockies, they're called the Bitterroots. Incredible sight. And on the other side of the valley, and this is a little four block little town called Hamilton, on the other side of the valley are mountains so much more like the ones I live in now. They remind me of the Blue Ridge and the Great Smoky Mountains, and they're called the Sapphires. And when you first look at them, they're not as striking because they don't go up as high, all right? and they're tree covered all the way up. They only go up six, 7,000 feet. But after you watch them for a while, after you start to connect with them, they seem every bit as beautiful in a totally different, wonderful way. So Hamilton, Montana sits in this idyllic place. Well, one afternoon in late summer, my wife and my two daughters and I decided to go to our favorite little cafe in town. Actually, let me rephrase, it was the only cafe in town. <laughs> but we liked it. And it was on the second floor of an old Main Street brick building. Now, if any of you have ever lived or spent any time in one of these little towns, like this little four block town, as soon as I describe this building, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They used to build these old Main Street brick buildings in such a way that the second floor was as high as a modern third floor in a modern building. In other words, you seem to have to climb up another whole flight of stairs just to get up to the second floor. And this cafe was on the second floor. So I got my little, my little girls and my wife, and we're climbing these stairs, and we're climbing these stairs, and we're climbing these stairs, and we're climbing these stairs. And finally, we get up to that second floor, and as soon as we walk in, it's like every new environment you've ever walked into. It's like every restaurant, it's like every hotel, it's sometimes like every house, it's like a business meeting. As soon as we walk in, we are hit with the clarity, all right, that everyone there has carved out their safe space, their comfort zone called their table. And though you can't see it, as soon as they carve out that space, what do they do? They erect these invisible magical barriers that protect them from all those other strange people on the other side of the barrier and people are talking about their days and their trials and their tribulations and their menus. So what do we do? I'll bet the same thing that a lot of us would do without even thinking because it's a habit. We do the same thing. We carve out our safe space called our table. We erect our invisible barriers and we sit down, we start talking about our day, our trials, our tribulations, our menu. Well, after about five minutes, for no reason other than four-year-olds really can't sit still for more than five minutes, all right, after about five minutes, little Jenna, without me noticing, gets up and she walks over and she stands and she looks out the windows. Now, the most striking thing about this cafe was its windows. It had huge panoramic picture windows that opened up in such a way as that you looked out, you could see both the mountain ranges going off in the distance. Unbelievable sight, except nobody saw it, except Jenna. All right, and so she's over by the window, and after a second, all the parents in this room will relate to this, or grandparents, or whatever, because after a second of coming in the, kind of in my own space, I notice my daughter is gone, all right? And I have that momentary little panic attack you get. So I look around frantically, I look around, and right away I spot her over at the window, and I go, cool, everything's fine, she didn't run out, she's okay. But as soon as I spot her, she whips around. And as soon as I see her little four-year-old face, 
I know all of us in this little cafe are in a heap of trouble. Because <laughs> my little four-year-old girl, though very small for four, has been blessed with tremendous lung power, kind of like Tom Judson, okay? And in this quiet, polite, refined environment, nobody daring to wake, break through those barriers, everybody just staying within themselves, she shatters all those barriers, she shatters the quiet, and she points out that window in total four-year-old ecstasy and joy. She points out the window, she goes, look, mommy, daddy, Kelsey, we're in heaven. <laughs> well, the whole place goes dead quiet. <laughs> Everybody starts staring at us, we start turning really bright red. But after a second, the magic started that really starts the inspiration for today. It's magic that's alive in this room already. And the magic was, after the shock wore off, people started laughing. It was so refreshing. It was so beautiful. It was so authentic. It was so ex excited and enthusiastic that people couldn't help themselves. They started laughing. And from that laughter, as often comes from laughter, the inspiration began to spread. And the next thing that happened was, people started talking to each other across those invisible barriers. In fact, by the time we left that cafe that night, it didn't feel like we'd gone to that cafe and we had been there dozens of times. It felt like we got together with a group of friends. In fact, we made two sets of friends that night that to this day, 11 years later, though we now live in North Carolina, they still live in Montana, they're some of our close family friends. And here's the part that inspired me and hopefully will inspire you because you're all about those barriers. And if you've ever lived in one of those small towns like I did or spent time in them, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You see, we had seen every one of those people before. You can't miss them in a small town. There's only one post office. There's only a couple of banks. There's only like two supermarkets, a lot of competition. We had seen every one of those people on that four blocks of Main Street and yet we had never spoken to one of them until that little girl created what today is all about, which is called a breakthrough. A breakthrough that you get the opportunity to share in every day, a breakthrough of enormous proportion. How much does it mean to you to walk by people who you used to pretend you didn't see and to connect with them? That's what you get to do through Alouette. How does it make you feel? How, how, how much different is it to have family friends who are always right there, just like the dream is always there. And my daughter taught me that day and inspired me about breakthroughs. If anybody asks you what you do in your Alouette business from here on out, very simple answer. You're in the breakthrough business to create break, breakaways. You're in the breakthrough business, breaking through from fear to freedom, from failure to faith, from ego to we go. All right, but to break away, you got to start with the breakthroughs. And my daughter taught me most of all that breakthroughs are not only possible, but you got to believe more. you got to believe that breakthroughs are planable. And we're going to spend all of our time today understanding the power of you as a breakthrough leader. And that's the first part of the inspiration. Second part came from the same experience, but it took six months before it broke through my fixed call. And about six months later, I'm flying in an airplane. And if any of you have flown will have had this experience. It was one of those white puffy cloud days. And I'm sitting in the window seat, and eventually you break free of the clouds, and you get up above, and I'm looking down at these magnificent, these magnificent cloud formations. And I guess it's because I'm old enough that I remember the, you know, the movie Heaven Can Wait. All right? But I'm looking down at those, and for whatever reason, it just triggered in me, it reminded me of heaven. And I started remembering Jenna, and I started chuckling in my heart, and I'm going, my daughter is so darn cute. Remember when she said, look, Mommy, Daddy, Kelsey, we're in heaven, and I'm smiling, I'm feeling good. And all of a sudden, zoop. It hit me like a rocket ship. And for the first time, I saw what I had completely missed. I saw that my little girl was brilliant. My little girl was a visionary. Why? Because she's the only one who saw heaven. It was right in front of all of us. All we saw was our rules, our regulations, our trials, our tribulations, our mess ups, our times we didn't feel right. She saw heaven. All right, and my second goal and inspiration today is this, for everyone in this room to leave here with a little bit more of my daughter's vision about the heaven that's in a company that understands the best thing they can do for you is to ignite your brand. So when you talk to people, oh, I've heard of them before. That is big. I believe me, I've been in business a long time. That's a huge thing. To have a, bit, have a company that has leaders that are incredible in front of a room who are incredible because they have passion about what they're doing. But most of all, I, I want you to see the heaven that's sitting in your chair. 
the heaven that's in you because you have the possibility in any precious moment to break through. 